a flat opening, but a very typical pattern when there is uh, less interest, uh, less follow through on the China trade talks. You get cyclicals underperforming and you get defensive sectors outperforming. So just take a look here. There's your cyclicals, metals, and mining, energy, bank stocks tra trading to the downside, more defensive consumer oriented names, staples, utilities, which have been sitting at historic highs, are uh, all outperforming. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this hot IPO market. We talked about this uh, yesterday and what was going on and the market issues overall here. So three of the four really haven't changed. Trade war issues, global industrial and manufacturing slowdown we've been seeing, and essentially flat earnings, high valuations. We'll talk a lot more about third quarter earnings, but it's the same as the second quarter. Down slightly, but are going to be turning positive likely in the next few weeks. But it's been essentially flattish. That's the main story all year. And the new uh, X factor here, the impeachment inquiry, a lot of questions about what that means for the markets. We don't have a lot of answers. We don't have answers particularly about the U.S.-Canada-Mexico trade agreement and whether or not the House... Uh, whether Nancy Pelosi is going to push that through or not. That's a big question. We just don't have the answers to that. There's drug pricing legislation that's out there. We don't know if that's going to get through. So this is a sort of added X factor for the overall market that's not clear what's going on. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the IPO market and how it's doing here. Of course, we're waiting for Peloton to come here. They priced at the high end of the range. That's certainly good news. We're talking about the trends in the IPO market uh, overall. But the fact is, it's been an ugly month overall for IPOs. There's been a real revaluations of pricing. This occasionally happens when markets get jittery. Let's just take a look at the IPO ETF. Remember, up 30% on the year going into September, one of the big performers. And we are now sitting at the lowest levels since February, essentially, for that this is a basket of the last 60 or so larger IPOs. So it's a good indication of pricing for recent IPOs. If you take a look at what's been the issues, what are the problems uh, that are out there? We've seen a big valuation pushback, particularly on things like software IPOs that are based on potential for future profits and future earnings out there. When market gets a little jittery, they get pushback on their valuations. Profitability issues come to the fore again. Uh, and that's a major issue. And I also think legitimately the WeWorks governance issues, uh, the issues that have been out there around WeWorks, the pushing back on insider dealings, the multi-class structure of uh, the family ties, that has now become more important. I think it had an effect on that whole valuation question on WeWork and is still having an effect on IPOs in general. That whole ESG, environmental, social and governance issues, still coming to the fore. Recent IPOs this week, Lyft, this is a new low for list, down 10% for the week. Uh, we see some of these other names that are weak. Pinterest, which has been all over the place. They went public back in April, but they're down 10%. There's a new low for Slack down 10%. And Smile Direct, that's not a typo there, still dropping down 20%. So the bottom line is we're in this process now of reevaluating the IPOs and their, what they're, how much you want to push back on the valuations. And that's obviously inter inter uh, infecting the uh, IPO market. We're waiting for Endeavor Group. They're going to be pricing tonight. This is a part of the deal, William Morris. Uh, I have not seen any changes uh, in their SEC filing. Still at 30 to 32. There has been some discussion. There may be price talks. Still haven't seen it, though, in the SEC filings. And that's what matters right now. We'll keep an eye on that and let you know.